Well, good evening, everyone. It's good to have you tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, I uh, said this morning in our devotion that I would see you tonight. So hopefully that's what I'm doing. Uh, hope, in other words, hopefully you're plugged in. And, and let's get started with our, our uh, service tonight by turning to hymn number 435. Hymn number 435. Hymn number 435. Since Jesus came into my heart, hopefully there's been a change in your life since you, since you uh, uh, found the Lord Jesus Christ, or in this case, he found you. Let's sing it with me on the first. Here we go. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have lied in my soul for which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Blood to joy, O oh my soul, like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. Has there been a change uh, when you found the Lord? I hope, pray there has been. On the last, sing it with me. Here we go. I shall go there to dwell in that city I know since Jesus came into my heart. And I'm happy, so happy as onward I go since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy, oh my soul, like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. Well, I hope and pray that uh, you're doing well. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. We hope and pray that the service will be a blessing. Just want to remind you that uh, this coming uh, Sunday, we are encouraging everyone to, to meet at the 11 o'clock uh, hour, 11 o'clock uh, morning service, and we'll be gathering here in the uh, auditorium for that service. All the rest of the services are online. Now, I will also remind that Brother Jack's class, uh, Brother Jack will be here at 10 o'clock, and he'll be teaching his lesson so if you are a part of Brother Jack's class and you want to come and sit here in the auditorium, you are more than welcome to do that. And so just want to make that clear to you, all right? But all the other services, we are going to be remaining online, uh, at least through the month of, of December. And uh, as I, like I said, as we see and how we, uh, uh, as we watch things and hopefully things will get better, uh, but we're just taking precautions that is, that's what we're doing. So, But at the same time, we want to encourage you to be faithful. We want you to uh, uh, you know, resist the temptation of just liking to stay at home. And uh, I know, uh, I know uh, we're having to do this, but don't, don't let it change your routine as far as uh, convincing yourself just to stay home. You know, we're going we're gonna to get through this and, and we're going to get back and we're going to be meeting uh, on a regular basis on all the services and we encourage you and expect you to come and be with us, okay? All right. Well, let's, uh, let's sing our next song, hymn number 276. Hymn number 276. Jesus is all the world to me. Sing it with me tonight. Here we go. Jesus is all the world to me. My life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without Him I would fall. Peace. 
try this again. Hymn number 276, Jesus is all the world to me. We'll sing the last verse. Come on, everyone together. Here we go. Jesus is all the world to me. I want no better friend. I trust him now. I'll trust him when life's fleeting shall end beautiful life with such a friend beautiful life that has no end eternal life eternal joy he's mine Thank you so very much for singing along with us. Uh, tonight, I uh, want to read a, uh, uh, a missionary letter just to make a few references uh, from it. And, uh, and that is our missionary, the Todd family. And they are missionaries in Costa Rica. And uh, uh, they are just a little concerned about uh, their visas and trying to make sure that uh, the, uh, their immigration papers and all that they have uh, to, you know, as they enter the country and things like that, uh, they are now back in the country. They were in the States uh, for a while, but they're still having to work on their immigration papers. And so, uh, and we're talking about the Todd family. And so we want to just encourage you to be praying about that with them and that uh, they uh, that everything will go well. He does write and say that the 8th of November was our first Sunday back at the church. It was a blessing to be able to preach again in Spanish. Pray for the church people as the pandemic has caused many Christians to be afraid and hence unfaithful. Obviously, we have that problem even here. And so it's, it's, uh, it, it uh, reacts to people uh, all over the world. And the temptation is, you know, we become so afraid that we become unfaithful to God. And so uh, he asked prayer for that. He says, do note that the prayer list on the left of this particular letter that I'm reading has, a sp has spiritual needs that are now. And so uh, he's got some... Uh, a prayer request concerning uh, church family, and uh, there's a list of them here. Uh, there's some spiritual needs that some of the families, Hernandez family, the Hildago family, uh, and this uh, brother, uh, this man by the name of Brian uh, Calvo, uh, have some spiritual needs. And then also there's a lot, there's a good number of salvation needs. And so, and I'm very thankful to, to uh, tonight as we go to the Lord in prayer, uh, there online, as you pray for the Todd family, uh, as far as our missionaries, and pray that uh, with these, for these spiritual needs that, that we, that I briefly mentioned, and I know they would appreciate it. But especially concerning the Todd family's papers as they are uh, uh, entering the country, making sure that everything is okay there so they can continue ministering there in Costa Rica. Okay? So remember the Todd family if you don't mind. I know at this time we would be taking prayer requests, and of course it's kind of hard to do that. Uh, but... Uh, but I do want to bring some prayer requests to you tonight. First of all, uh, uh, pray for uh, Beulah Reed. She's had just a very difficult month. 
uh, and she's been in and out of the hospital, uh, and so they are, they've been draining fluid off of her lungs. I know that her family would appreciate it very much if you would pray for her and that God's will be done there. Also, would like to uh, let you know and, and ask that you continue to pray for the Jones family, Dave and Kara Jones. Uh, Kara uh, went through surgery. It's, it's, um, it, it, it is a surgery that she's had uh, many times before. And according to what uh, Brother Dave said, that everything went well. And so we praise the Lord for that. We rejoice with them. And church, we want you to continue, though, to pray for her recovery. And then also pray for uh, Brother Dave as he not only tries to take care of his wife, but he's also dealing with some physical uh, concerns of his own. I know he would, and the Lord knows what they are, but if you'll please continue to pray for the Jones family, all right? Bethany? All right. All right. Also, please uh, remember Chad uh, Garrett in your prayers. He is, tomorrow, he's having uh, a tumor removed off of his ankle. And so that takes place tomorrow. And I know we still have uh, people recovering from, from surgeries. And uh, I would ask that you remember the Thomas family, uh, James and Phyllis, and uh, pray for his recovery. Pray also for Sandy Hopper's recovery with her eye surgeries. I know she's having a little bit of a difficulty with one of them. And so please pray for her on that. And, and I'm, I know there are others that I'm just not remembering, but uh, obviously, uh, even though we're not meeting necessarily uh, the numbers wise in the building, we need to take some time and pray. So whether you're by your chair or on your couch or wherever, we just stop for a moment and uh, let's spend some time praying for these that you've heard. And may I remind you to be praying for our country, be praying for our president, and be praying also for uh, our missionary, and especially tonight, the Todd family. And then also pray for your church as we go and minister and as we deal with, you know, we're in the month of December now. And so obviously we want to, you know, we want God to use us and, and to be a blessing. So, so would, you, would you pray for the church and uh, that God could use us as we go through this month, okay? All right, let's spend some time in prayer, and then uh, I'll close this in prayer, and then we'll get right into the Word of God, okay? Let's go ahead and pray.
Father, tonight, thank you that we can, Lord, gather here in this place and, Lord, gather even online and, and to uh, engage in prayer. And even though, Lord, we cannot always come together right now, I pray, Lord, that you would hear our prayer and, Lord, that we would continue to uh, lift our uh, request up to you. And, Lord, I pray that you'll hear our prayers tonight. And, dear God, that your will be done. Now, Lord, as I break forth uh, your word, Lord, bless it and apply it to hearts tonight, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would tonight, take your Bible and turn uh, with, with me to Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12 tonight. In our morning devotions, we have been going through the book of Romans. And um, every now and then as I uh, do devotions and every now and then as I'm reading here or there, things jump out at me and, and so I kind of note it and, and sometimes I go back to it. Uh, sometimes I, I'll prepare a message from it and things like that. Well, tonight is one of those times uh, I have been enjoying uh, the, the book of Romans and as far as devotion and and it really has been a blessing to my heart. It has uh, showed me things that uh, I think are, have been a blessing to, to me and, and, um, and what maybe I've been dealing with with, with people. And, uh, and so it's just been good. It really has. And I, I would encourage you, if you don't, uh, if you don't uh, uh, listen to our devotion on, on, uh, on, uh, morning, in the mornings from Monday through Friday, if you don't, I... I would encourage you to do so if you don't have some kind of devotion. But um, it, was, it was our way of, of engaging with the people to, to uh, just be in contact with them. When this COVID situation first started, uh, we didn't quite understand or know what to expect. And so it was our way to, to keep in contact with the people. And so I was encouraged to continue it. So we have done that. And so anyway, it's, it's been a blessing. So we are in Romans chapter 12. And, and if, you, if, if you know anything about Romans chapter 12, of course, probably one of the most uh, uh, you know, popular passages is verse 1 and 2 of Romans chapter 12. And, and of course, but, but as you continue to read through Romans chapter 12, it, it literally gives... Uh, uh, marks of a true Christian. It, you know, this is the way Christians ought to behave themselves. And I tell you, it is a it is a wonderful list. It's a it's a list that I think would be convicting, no doubt. But tonight we're not going to go through it all. But there is a part that it, it would have seen. It would seem like that that uh, uh, this particular area uh, is is was. Uh, dealt with quite often and that is our love for one another but especially how we treat not only one another but also even our enemies and what and what ought to happen is that as a Christian every every child of God ought to have the love of God flowing through his life and 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 because of that it ought to spill over in how we react to one another and even our enemies. And so we find in Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse number 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Now, some, some of you might say, well, that's what I want to do to my enemy. I want to I heap coals of fire on his head. Well, that's not what, what it means. You may be thinking that, but that's not why we do what, what verse number 20 <laughs> tells us to do. But we'll get that here in just a minute. But in verse 21, it sort of sums it all up. Be not overcome of evil, 
but overcome evil with good. Let us pray. Father, I pray that, Lord, you would encourage us and lead us in your precious word tonight. And Lord, not only may our reaction to our enemies be different because of, of, of you living in our lives, but Lord, even how we treat our brothers and sisters in Christ. So Lord, may your will be done tonight, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it is, there is a spirit that we have as Christians, and this spirit that we have, it should lead us to yield to something that is contrary to our human nature. It is the spirit of peace when it comes with one another. In other words, we as Christians ought to have the spirit of peace in our lives. And, and, uh, and when it comes to, of course, one another, uh, but also even with our enemies, there ought to be a desire to seek for peace and not war or, or vengeance. Well, believe it or not, Romans chapter 12 and verse 18, the Bible says this, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. And I say amen to that. The Bible also says in John chapter 14 in verse 27, Jesus is speaking and he says this, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And oh my goodness, that peace that we can only get from God, and I tell you, uh, as Christians, we not only have that peace, but we ought to exercise that peace. But the Bible also says in Romans chapter 14 and in verse 19, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another. And so it is that spirit of peace that we as Christians ought to have. But in our text tonight, there are four things I want to I want to leave with you concerning peace. First of all, the position of peace. The position of peace. The Bible says in, in, in uh, chapter 12, notice if you would, in verse number 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. In other words, this position of peace ought to be that position that in other words, as peace works in our lives, we ought not to be avenging ourselves. That's not the position of peace. And so personal vengeance should not be on our agenda. We ought not to be setting out as Christians uh, determined, I'm going to get them back. They're going to pay for what they did to me. No, that's not the position of peace. Our desire to get people back by injury or hurt of some kind ought not to be. And the ideal is this, may we let anger go. Because you see, that's the position of peace in our lives, to let that anger go. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil, be, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And so would to God that we would allow the peace of God to have the position in our lives like it ought to and that it would be the one that, uh, that would dominate our lives and, and, and as a result of that, we would put aside this anger, this, this, this desire to get back, as, as the Bible puts it, you know, avenge not yourselves. I want to pay them back. I want to get revenge. Well, believe it or not, that's not the position of peace. But tonight, the place of peace. The Bible says in that same verse, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give, here it is, place unto wrath. Now one might say, well, preacher, what in the world is that talking about? You see, the place of, of, the place of peace 
is you turning it over to the Lord. That's what it's referring to. In other words, to give place unto wrath is this ideal of, of let wrath do its job. In other words, but in this case, it's not you, but it's the Lord. For the Bible says in, 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 our, in our context, you know, give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. In other words, it is not your duty, it is not your it should not be your goal to, to pay people back, but the place of peace is simply this. Let God do it. Let God take care of it. Because God is faithful, He will truly do what He says He's going to do. And so this ideal of the place of peace, let God take care of it, He truly will repay. He truly will be faithful to what He says. No one's, gonna, no one's going to uh, uh, fool God or, or, or is stronger than God. No one's going to get the upper hand of, uh, over God. So let God do what he wants. You know, sometimes we kind of interfere and we take over. Why don't you get out of the way and, and give place to wrath and let God do what he wants to do? God is a lot better at working in the hearts of people. Than you and I are. You see, we're talking about peace here, and the we're looking. We looked at the position of peace. We we're, we've looked at the place of peace. According to verse twenty, tonight let's look at the action of peace. Well, the writer of of Romans says this. Again, verse nineteen. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. In verse 20 though, we look at the action of peace. Therefore, since it is the Lord, you know, in other words, it's his duty. It is his responsibility to, to pay back. It is his you know, he says, I will repay, saith the Lord. Vengeance is mine, he says. And so since that's not our job, what are we supposed to do? Well, I'm glad you ask. As a child of God, God working in our lives, what ought to be leading in our lives is peace. And that peace will lead us to do good. For the Bible says in verse number 20, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger... Well, good, they can starve to death, right? Well, that's, that's, that's that human nature, right? But according to what the Bible says, if your enemy, if they hunger and they ask you for food, what do you do? Well, according to what the Bible says, you feed him. If he thirsts, in other words, who's he? Well, that enemy again. If he's thirsty and you, you, can, you can give him something to drink, you ought to give him something to drink. What are, you, what are you doing? Well, can I tell you tonight, that's exactly what God's people ought to be doing, and that is this, what you're doing, you're doing good. You're doing good to your enemy, even though, you know, by nature, I mean, you don't treat your enemy good, you should, you're supposed to treat your enemy bad. But that's not what Christians are supposed to do. I would even dare say that's not even how you're supposed to treat your brothers and sisters in Christ either. We are, we are in a month where there's a lot of violence in the month of December. There's a lot of, there's a lot of hard, heartache and there's a lot of hardship in this month. Of course, with, whole, with COVID and all that, it just expounds on it. And I tell you, folks, if there's any time where we ought to exhibit God, God's goodness and exhibit doing good, boy, it's this month, that's for sure. We cannot seem to get along with anybody and, and how sad that is. But here, the writer is even talking about our enemies. I mean, uh, would to God that we could get along with our brothers and sisters in Christ, and sadly enough, we can't even do that. 
And so the Bible says here, when it comes to our enemies, if he's hungry, you feed him. If he's thirsty, you give him something to drink. And as a result, the Bible calls it this. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. And I know what some of you are thinking. Well, I want to burn that guy. Well, that's not what it means. But what it does mean is this. That your, your actions of good, your actions of kindness will truly burn him. In other words, or burn her. It will, it, will, it will burn their conscience. It will incite them concerning that they are guilty of what they're doing. That's the idea that our actions truly, God can use in the lives of people around us to convict them, to make them ashamed, to, to, to bring them to the point that they realize, boy, I've messed up. But how can that be? Well, the Bible calls it, that's like keeping coals of fire on their head. Not literally, but the ideal is this, it burns their conscience or it, it, it burns them to the point of, man, I've done wrong or, or you know, I need, to do, I need to do better here. You see, the actions of peace, feeding your enemy, uh, giving your enemy something to drink, these are all actions of doing good. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17, the Bible says this, having a good conscience. By the way, that's what you and I ought to desire to have. You know, a lot of times we're, we're not any better than our enemies because we do just the same thing. That's not having a good conscience. And having a good conscience is having, a, having a, uh, the peace uh, between you and God that you've done everything right. Hey, this holiday season uh, through Thanksgiving, did you do everything right when it came to your family? When it came to gathering together and how you treated one another? How about, how about your neighbors and things like that? Well, I, you know, we don't have control of what people do but you do have control of what you do. And so the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, having a good conscience. In other words, you've done what is right. That whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers. In other words, these are your enemies and they're doing you wrong. They're speaking evil of you. But listen to what the Bible says. They may be ashamed... Well, how are they ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ? How are they ashamed? You know how they're ashamed? They are convicted by your actions. They are convicted by you doing good. You're, you having a clear conscience, you've done what is right. And as a result of that, God is able to use that in the lives of people around you. And the Bible says that these folks are ashamed. Kind of like heaping coals of fire on their head. That falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better, folks, if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. You know, sadly enough, a lot of Christians are overcome of evil. In other words, they get so mad, they get so angry, boy, they do things that later on they regret. What happened, preacher? Well, they were overcome of evil. That's exactly what happened. Folks, we ought to desire, a, as the Bible puts it, a clear conscience or a, or a good conscience. Why? Well, by having a good conscience, that's because... You did that which is right before the Lord. Hey, please, don't ask your neighbor, what do you think I should do? You think I should punch him? You know what they'll say, don't you? Yeah, lay him out. Yeah, punch him real hard. He deserves it. I wouldn't ask those people. But you ought to ask God. You ought to live your life according to what the Bible says. You see, those that is the action of peace. Actions that lead to peace. Actions that put you in, in a position 
to make for peace. You see, this world really needs some peace. This world really needs to see people do that which is right before people who are not doing what's right. That's the way you and I ought to behave. Yeah, but preacher, you don't know what they said to me. Yeah, but preacher, you don't know what they did to me. Yeah, but preacher, and, and we could go on and we can. We really can. But I'm just telling you the essence of Christianity as God works in our hearts and our lives leaves us with love and this peace that ought to change our lives and how we react to one another. And so tonight we looked at the, the position of peace, a position that, that, that leads us away from you know, vengeance. The place of peace, understanding that it is not our vengeance, it belongs to God. We ought to, we ought to turn it over and, 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 and deny and, and say, no, I don't, I don't want anger, I don't want that. that well, I'm going to leave that to God. That's his duty. That's not my duty. And tonight we've seen the, the action of peace. And I know it goes against, against our nature, that's for sure. And the Bible specifically says, your enemy, if, you're, if your enemy hungers, let him starve. No, that's not what peace does. No, peace will feed him. Peace will Give him something to drink because he's thirsty. But as a result of that, it allows God to work. It's kind of like keeping coals of fire on their head. In other words, God can convict them, make them ashamed of what they've done. Why? Well, that's punishment, right? Well, no doubt, obviously, that, that, that is punishment. But, but, the, but the intent is to make for good the intent is to to uh, uh, make things better the intent is to restore and, and to get people right that's that's the intent well how do you know that preacher well I'm glad you asked look at the last verse be not overcome of evil but overcome evil with good you see folks there's enough evil in this world don't you think it's time that we overcome evil? Don't you think it's time that we defeat evil? Don't you think it's time that we, we don't let evil win? Evil's been winning way too much. And so here the writer says, be not overcome of evil. You see, tonight we're talking about the victory of peace. And first of all, I have to warn all of us, don't be overcome of evil. You can be. And boy, if, if I could somehow uh, ask this question and I could see, uh, see hands, I would probably see many hands raised to this question. How many of you have been overcome of evil? Oh, I preacher, I remember when. Oh, I just lost it. I, 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 I wasn't going to let him embarrass me or I wasn't going to take what he said and I did some things I wished I'd never done. But what happened was you were overcome of evil. In other words, evil ruled and evil took over and you yielded to evil and evil called the shots and you got the results of it. But you know, as Christians, you know who's supposed to call the shots? God is. The Spirit of God working in our lives. And we are to be yielding to the Spirit of God and not to our flesh. You'll never solve problems the right way by yielding to your flesh. You will not accomplish anything. You won't have a good marriage. You won't, you won't uh, get along with your neighbors as long as you yield to the flesh. You won't do it. I'll even go further to say this. Even in church, we won't have the church God would have for us if we just yield to the flesh. We won't. Spirit of God won't be able to work. And so, so the demand is this, be not overcome of evil. Well, then preacher, I mean, I mean, we've heard it, haven't we? Well, we're just human, right? 
as if that's an excuse and it's okay and, and, and we'll just move on. I'm, t I'm telling you, you know, apparently, God, if, 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 if we're not supposed to overcome with, of evil, then what in the world are we supposed to do? Because I'm just human, right? Well, yes, we are human, that's for sure. But what is different is this. We have the Spirit of God living inside of us. Now, the saved, they don't. But for those of us that are saved, please listen to me. Are you saved tonight? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, then you and I have not the excuse. And so since God says, be not overcome of evil, then preacher, what are we supposed to do? I'm glad you asked. The Bible says, overcome evil, overcome evil. How do you do that? And boy, this is, this is what we struggle with. But you overcome evil with good. In other words, don't do evil, you do good. That's exactly what the Bible is saying. Overcome evil with good, with doing good. I know, I know that they may do evil, but you turn around and do good. Yeah, your enemy may hunger, you know, and we would say, well, starve. No, no, do good. Well, what do I do? Well, you're feeding. Feed, feed your enemy? Yes, that's doing good, and that's overcoming evil. Can I, can I arrest your attention for a moment? Ephesians chapter 4, I want you to see this. Ephesians chapter 4. Are you ready? The Bible says... In Ephesians chapter 4, actually starting with verse 22 on to the end of the chapter, it's talking about us changing. And what it's actually talking about is the way we change is we put off and we put on. In other words, we put off this old man, our fleshly things and the things that we do, and we start putting on the new man, which is after righteousness and doing that which is right. And it begins to list a lot of things. And we're not going to go through all of it tonight. But I, I will start, though, where I read earlier. For the Bible says, in verse number 31, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. With all malice. Now, folks, everything I just read to you is from the flesh. In other words, it's sinful. And, and Paul says, put it away from you. Well then, preacher, what are we supposed to do? If we can't do that, and I'm glad you asked. What I'm about to read to you is that which you do for good. In other words, doing good. Here it is. You ready? Now this is just an example. In verse 32, And be ye kind one to another. Kind. Folks, think about it. Now in our text, that we, it was, it's our enemies. And we are to do what with our enemies? Where well, we are to feed them, we are to water, you know, give them water. This is doing good. Can I tell you? Instead of being angry and wrathful and, 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 and you know, evil speaking and all of that, you ought to be kind one to another. That's doing good. The Bible goes on and says, you are to be tender hearted towards people. You're hard and, and you ought to have their best interests you know, you know, in mind, you are to, you know, that's doing good towards other people. And then the Bible even says, forgiving one another. That's doing good. That's doing good. So many times Christians hold grudges. 
for so long. And I tell you, you know what happens? You're not going to like it. But evil wins. When Christians are fighting and bickering, they have bitterness toward one another. Can I tell you what's happening? Evil is winning. But when it comes to this lost world, this lost world doesn't need to see a group of religious people doing the same things that they do. But they ought to see a group of people that are overcomers, that is overcoming evil. How? Nothing magical. No super power here. Just simply this. Yielding to the Spirit of God and doing good. Just simply doing good. You see, my friend, tonight, this world needs to see a, a people that are overcomers. This world needs to see someone that truly does care. And it may take you overcoming evil in order to care. So tonight, Peace. Is there peace in your life? Is there peace with you and your family? Is there peace with you and your church? Is there peace with you and God? Because if there is, then it truly will affect your relationship with not only Him, but with one another. And I hope and pray that you will experience the victory of peace. The victory of peace was simply as this. You are overcoming evil with good. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for your precious word. And as we've drawn on, these, uh, on, on this thought tonight, dear God, as we head into this, this month, a, a time where it is difficult for a lot of people, Lord, help us go about our lives with peace. Lord, may we truly desire peace and take the actions necessary for it. Lord, bless us. And may, Lord, through our actions, you can use our actions to work in the hearts and lives of people around us. And Father, forgive us where we have failed you. For I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you tonight. And may the Lord bless you. And may peace follow you. God bless you. See you.